Hello everyone. Uh, today I am going to discuss about RTDI. It's uh, it's called Run Time Type Identifications. It is one of the important feature of uh, C++, which enables to check your object at runtime. So, uh, as we know, like C++ provides a virtual mechanism cool. by which you can write a generic code. So, C++ virtual functions enable us to write uh, abstract based classes and take you know various uh, subclasses, instantiate it and use it generically like how you can use it, a base class. Let's consider a very popular systems which we use day, day to day every day is a graphic system. You have a graphic graphics framework in which basically you interact with various windows. You have a windows, let's say if you use Word, Notepad, uh, or let's say you use, uh, you know, mm, browser. So all are windows. And then you have some options where you can, you know, type something. You may have a way to customize some of your options. You may have a right mouse events and various things. So if you see this uh, windows, these are basically implemented as, as a very basic window on which some basic functionality are defined like they must have a coordinates on which this windows exist. They must have some draw functions on which basically you know you can draw it. Uh, so what the graphic system does, they also have an event handling mechanism. So you pass an event to it and it will respond. So they know like what sort of windows we have and they just delegate it to the windows to handle it. Okay. So what we do in, in say in a logic to draw we just go take each object, all the instances what we have for uh, all the windows and we just call it draw on it without knowing what is the actual implementation, what is the actual object basically it is. So the problem occurs uh, when you have some new features which you have implemented into your direct class. Let's say we have very simple uh, system, a text editor. Okay, so that text editor is basically lets it provide you just uh, options to you know open, close, uh, save, and then you have an editor where you can just write some content. Okay, what we have done basically we have taken it from an, a base instance. We have a, a window, and then we have derived it to a text window, and then control window. So let's say we have very basic functionality called draw, which exists as a virtual. In, in terms of uh, windows and then we have implemented it into the uh, the control window and also into the text window. So similar what we discussed previously like the draw is easy. You just take an instance, uh, just pass the reference to that and call draw on it. Yes, as a part of implementation we introduce a right mouse event in our text editor. What is that right mouse is like? If you just press the right mouse on the window of your text, you will be able to see cut, copy and paste. Let's say very basic functionality. The problem of us here is like you have implemented say functions called right mouse option or say right mouse uh, handling options, right? In your derived class, say text window. Because most of the generic programming we write using a base class pointer, so your base class is not having idea about the derived functions which you have implemented. How are we going to use it? And that's the big challenge. So initially the C++ was not having the support of RTTI. So later they felt like it's very cumbersome. There are different mechanisms by which you can achieve it. Let's say you may introduce some functions. We should say that this is the name of my object. Then you compare it, you type cast your object a static type cast to that particular instance and then you use it. So in order to handle such problems, basically RTTI originates and then we have two features in uh, RTTI. One is type ID, other is dynamic cast. So let's see one by one why is, uh, these items are. So first type ID. So type ID is a feature of C++. What it does, if you give an, a base class reference, it will tell you what is the type of this object 
or if you pass a class name to this type ID, it will again give you the type name of that class. So with help of an, another class called type name, so each classes have their own instance of type name. So it basically compares and if the check matches like, if let's say if you have a, a window pointer which is basically a text window and you have a text window class name, if you compare uh, let's say type id win and then you compare type id text window if both have this win is an instance of this text window then you will see uh, it's matching and then you can type cast and work the problem with this approach is like if if you further have say various window let's say graphics window or let's say you have html text win window which is again derived from the text window. Okay, so type ID gives an exact match if this particular object is an instance of this. Okay, then it's like complete match of these two. So the problem exists like if you go and introduce further, let's say five classes, you have to go and modify your rightmost handling code, saying that if type ID of bin equal to type ID of new window type matches then do this and then do this. So that problem is solved with help of you know dynamic task. We'll see both of them uh, partially uh, in the code session. So what type ID sorry what type cast does um, dynamic type cast does is basically it takes a pointer or reference and then it converts them into that your uh, re requested type. If it is able to convert it properly, it will return you the object. Okay. Uh, if it is uh, a pointer, it will return you the object pointer. If it is reference, it will return you the object reference. And then blindly you go and uh, use it. Okay. So dynamic cast basically serve purpose. Uh, it, it's it's basically easier relationship. You have a base class or you have say intermediary class and then you may be deriving say 10 classes, subclasses out of it. Okay. So if you just provide this intermediary class, it will just check whether this particular instance, it may be like one of from this 10. So it will just check if it is an, uh, you know, easy relationship. If it is derived from this, it will convert you. And then you, you can leverage your, you know, the extra features or the function which you have implemented in derived classes. So dynamic cast come into two flavor. So you can pass your uh, base class pointer to the dynamic cast. If it is able to type cast properly, it will return you the address, else it will return you null. The same thing you can pass a base class reference. If it is able to type cast to proper derived class object reference, then it will return you the object reference, it, else it will give you an exception. The exception is bad underscore cast. So what you can do like in case of uh, a reference you have to try, you have to put into try and catch block. So put your code into try block, see if it is able to type cast properly, else just catch it and do the normal behavior. So uh, I will just demonstrate this part in the code section. So let's, uh, uh, was it uh, like we have this window class and then we have derived two classes out of it, the text window and the control window. We have a method draw defined in the, uh, the virtual in the window class and then we, we are just implementing the same these two class classes with a draw function and in addition to this let's say we have a right mouse option method inside my text window so we'll see the actual code here let's say we have a, a class so let's say we have a class here named window where we ha we are just deciding we have a, a draw and then inside it, my text I'm just implementing it the similar way 
if you go below in my control window we, we are again implementing the virtual draw so what is the benefit of this like we can write a generic code let's say we have a text editor which is again derived from the window as and part of my text editor we have the control window and the text window so, so these are the two data members we have it's a window uh, of control window and then text window so as part of my main functions what we are doing we are instanti instantiating this two classes and then we are passing it to my window text editor now if you call, call a draw over it there is no problem it will just go and call the draw on its uh, uh, internal components like the draw control uh, and then draw text control so both will be taken care here and in this part now if you see the another features which we discuss uh, in, in the last session is is the handle is the right mouse options event so let's say in my text editor we have provided another functions which is right mouse option and we are just performing some cut copy and paste in this right mouse now from our framework now from our framework if we pass a control and then say left mouse or out right mouse press event in the handle event it's, it's difficult for us reason is that because only this right mouse is handled in case of uh, you know the text window so how to handle such scenario so we have already discussed like we have we can use type id we pass the base class pointer uh, type id to type id and then if we match to the you know like uh, the derived class if both matches then we are very much sure that uh, this window is an instance of text window so we can just call uh, we can just type cast and call it so let's see like how this code is so once we compile this we can just run and we will get the output so first we got I am drawing all child's windows this from the main and then we have I am drawing setup control like new save this is coming from our control window then I am drawing left top uh, right top this is coming from my uh, text window and then finally there are a lot of right mouse event but only in my text window is is basically you know, responding to that let's come and see like how we can do the same thing with help of um, how we can do the same thing with the help of you know like dynamic cast so let's comment this part of code So we have just commented this part of code and what we are going to introduce here is like if it is the right mouse press let's try to uh, type cast it using a dynamic cast and see if the given window is of type text window so how to do this maybe we can just say text window star txt when and then what we are doing here is like dynamic cast and then you provide your you know like uh, on what you want to type cast it so basically we want to type cast it as a text window okay and then pass your actual parameters what you got here let's just check so we discuss like uh, this type dynamic type cast uh, comes into two flavors if you're passing a base class pointer and if you type casting it to some of its derived classes if it is able to perform 
the type pass properly you will get the object else you will get null so you check if it is text win is not null right then what you do is you just go and call your right mouse okay so just let's compile this and see how we are doing so let's compile perfectly just run it so you see using the same using the dynamic cast we are we are implementing it so what's the benefit of type id and dynamic cast is like if you see like if we use come to this event handling if we use this type id let's say tomorrow we are having some another type let's say html viewer or html text window and in such case you have to again write if condition saying that if type id star win equals equals to type id you know html window then perform this task but here you are free right so if you are taking any instance if, if you are passing any window of type text window it will perform this task perfectly fine so uh, so this is what uh, basically we had on the code section gives it involves you you know to take the decision at run time though there is a bit overhead involved here reason is that it it concerned to the type name class and try to get what object it is but it's very safe in terms so uh, that's